In this video, we're going to help you build your sales budget. Here in your sales budget, you're going to include all the revenue coming into your business from a variety of different sources so that we can then plan out the right amount of labor, equipment, overhead, and ultimately net profit. There's a couple of things you're going to want to remember when you're building your sales budget. Number one, you're building a sales forecast. So when you're looking at your profit and loss from last year to see what your sales were, just remember when you're budgeting. The goal of this exercise isn't just to type in exactly what you did last year. Your budget's going to just tell you the same thing as your P&L. The goal of the budget is to put together a plan for profit for the next year. So use last year's sales as a guideline in terms of what you did last year, but make sure when you're budgeting that you budget based on a forecast. What are you going to do or what do you hope to do next year? The next tip you got to remember when you're building your sales budget is to be realistic. Don't be overly aggressive or overly pessimistic. Both of them are going to hurt you when you're budgeting. If you're overly aggressive, you may not hit your sales goals. And if you don't hit your sales goals, good chance you won't hit your target net profit either. If you're overly pessimistic, then your costs, especially your overhead, might end up being higher than it actually is. And if it's higher, it's going to make your bids more expensive. If your bids are more expensive, it's going to be harder to win jobs. And if it's harder to win jobs, you might walk yourself right into a pessimistic scenario. Also remember to include all sales in your sales budget. Lots of times companies remember what got entered into accounting. And we're not going to point any fingers here, but sometimes there's some sales happening that don't maybe get entered into accounting. If that's the case, and even if it's just a small case, build into your budget the sales that you may have acquired through cash deals. Your budget is a realistic projection of what's going to happen so that we can make sure we tune your overhead recovery. If you've got all kinds of cash sales that aren't tracked on your books, it's going to make your labor and materials and your overhead spending look way worse than it actually is if you don't count the cash sales in your element budget. The third step you're going to want to remember when you're building a sales budget is just don't stress the details yet. Get your sales forecast in and don't worry about having it exactly accurate. When we get to the end of the line of budgeting and after you've entered your crews and your equipment and your overhead, you're going to pretty much see what your sales need to be to turn a profit. And at that point, we can come back around to the sales budget and make some adjustments so that you've got A, a realistic sales goal, but B, and just as importantly, a realistic and fair net profit waiting for you at the end of the year. So don't stress getting your sales goals exactly right just yet, because chances are 99% when you go through your budget, you're going to be coming back to these numbers and making some tweaks anyway. Let's dive right in now to learn how to build our first sales budget. I'm going to start here from the last screen we left off on in our previous video, the budget information screen. When you create your first budget, this is the screen you're on. To get to your sales budget, what you're going to want to do is click on the sales tab on the left hand side here. But there's a little tip before you even do that. The LMN menu sits here on the left hand side and it's your way of getting through budgeting and estimating and time and systems and all the other areas of LMN. We're not going to be using any of these areas when we're budgeting. We can be focused on just the budget for the next little bit. So there's a three line button up at the top here right beside the LMN logo that will actually shrink that menu or make it disappear. You can always get it back. Just click the three lines again and it'll come back. Click the three lines to make it disappear and click them again to make it come back. I'll keep them disappear. That way I get more screen space to work with my budget. And when I'm done my budget and I want to save and go do something else, I'll just come back to here. Now we want to work on our sales budget. So I want to click the sales budget tab on the left hand side. Right now it's going to say sales zero and it says zero because we haven't entered anything yet. When you click that you're going to see this screen change. Your sales should light up indicating that you're on the sales budget. And the title should now read sales budget. No information is going to be up here because you haven't entered anything yet. That's what you're going to do right down here. For those of you who've used LMN before, it's a little different than the old LMN. You used to click add new and you'd get a screen that popped up and you entered some information. We made that all the much easier now, especially for tablets and mobile devices, by entering it right here on the sales budget. So to add our first line item in the sales budget, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click New. 
Now you can see I've got some places where I can enter information. Here's what these pieces of information mean. Account ID is the account number for the sales account that you're entering in your sales budget. For instance, in QuickBooks, you might have an account number 40,000, and that might be your landscape construction sales. So what I would enter here is 40,000. Then I'm going to move across to division, and I'm going to put sales, landscape construction. Now, if you don't have account numbers with you, or you don't use account numbers, no problem. Just get rid of them. They're not needed. It's just a nice to have, and that way you can match your budget to your accounting one for one easily with numbers. But it's not mandatory. It is mandatory, however, to have a name, sales. Now, some of you might be breaking your sales down by divisions like I've done here, and I might have landscape construction and landscape maintenance and then maybe irrigation if I do that. Other companies will just have a sales total, and they'll just enter that as sales. Either way is fine. If you break up your sales in your divisions here or by divisions here, you're not actually breaking overhead up by division yet. You can do that, but you actually need to build a unique budget for each division if you want to do that. So whether you just enter sales as a single line here or you break up your sales here, like sales construction or sales maintenance, it doesn't matter. Either way is fine. The one advantage to breaking it up, you just end up with a sales goal that's specific to each division that might help planning and forecast. Let's move across here to the previous dollar sign. Previous means what you sold last year. So if last year my company sold $750,000 worth of construction sales or installation sales, that's what I'm going to type there. Hit tab or click to the next to have that lock in. Now you should see up at the top here, your previous versus forecast. Previous number should say $750,000. My forecast says zero because I haven't entered anything yet. Let's say this year we hope to do 900,000 in new sales for construction. And that's all I type here. And then I move on. So now you'll see previous versus forecast. Both numbers are filled out. I've got something in here. I've got the opportunity to enter comments if I want. Again, these are optional. You may not need comments or you might want to describe why you've had such a big or increase or decrease. Once you're happy with the line, click the save. That's important to lock it in. Now also, let's say my company does maintenance. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing for maintenance. New. Now I'm going to enter sales, maintenance. Now last year, for example, we did $250,000 worth of maintenance sales. And this year I want to do $350,000. And that's what I'm going to enter there. Just like that. I could put comments in if I wanted. Landed big property management contract as to why my sales went way up and it saved. That's all you need to do. Just repeat until you've got a complete picture of all your sales, what you did last year and what you hope to do this year. If you made a mistake, just click on it and fix it. So if I wanted to do 340, I'll just click on it and change that number and that'll instantly change to 340. If you added something you didn't want to, just go over to the right hand side and hit the delete button. It'll ask you if you're sure, you hit OK, and that number will be removed from your budget. So just keep adding rows until you're done your sales picture. For those of you that just entered it all as sales, you'll just have one row, click Save, and then you're ready to move on. Now you don't have to, but it's good practice every time you're done a budget to perhaps save your changes. So I'll just click up at the top at the Save Changes button. Once those changes are saved, that button will disappear until I start making further changes to my budget that would then um, prompt me to save those changes as well. And remember, we're here to help. If you have any questions about building a sales budget, feel free to email us at support at goelemen.com or use the live chat button and talk to one of our representatives live via the chat to ask your questions and get some answers or recommendations based on our best practice.